Well, here we have my 486 full AT tower system. I've had this one for a long time, but I've never actually showed it on the channel. But today it serves a purpose. We're going to be upgrading it with a 486 DX4 100 CPU. Let's get started. This system is a pretty interesting one. I've had it for a long time and it's only ever had a 486DX266 CPU installed, despite having PCI slots and a relatively fast ASUS motherboard. On the topic of the motherboard, this one's actually really interesting. It's made by ASUS and is really good quality. It features onboard SCSI, PCI slots and a bunch of other nice features. However, it only has an Intel 420TX Saturn chipset, which means the CPU support is really limited. For a motherboard manufactured in 1994, you could be under the impression that it will have good support for 3 volt CPUs and possibly even 586 ones, but this is just not true. According to the documentation I found on this motherboard, it only supports 5 volt CPUs with bus speeds up to 33 MHz, and it can only do as fast as a 66 MHz CPU, apparently. However, Intel did market their DX4 overdrive CPUs as a drop in replacement for DX266 CPUs since they had a regulator on board so they could be used in 5 volt only motherboards. So yeah, let's see if this CPU will actually work in this system. Before we do that however, I think it's important to take some benchmarks with the 66MHz CPU installed. So let's try running SpeedSys first to get a gauge of what we're working with. This is with turbo mode engaged, making the CPU run at its full speed of 66MHz. And I've sped up the footage here since this took a while. Now that the benchmark's complete, as we can see we got a score of 22.19 and apparently not much faster than a 486DX250. This is still decent though for a 486. Here's some more detailed specs of the system up here if you care to read them. Now let's try out some 3D Bench, but one thing I should quickly mention is that this system has an ATI Match32 video card installed, as you can see here. Anyway, on to the benchmark. And once it's done, as we can see, we get a score of 33.3. .3. And I also just tried out 3D Bench 2 to see if there was really any difference. And as we can see, once the benchmark's complete, we got a score of 327. Let's actually upgrade the system now. So after removing the plastic cover on the back and the screws, we can take the lid off rather easily. And now that we're at this stage, I'll give you a quick look at the expansion cards installed in this system. I've got a Sound Blaster 16 model CT1740, and also that ATI Match32 video card, which is a really early PCI one with this weird kind of RAM on it. This is a really interesting card. Anyway, now moving to the CPU upgrade itself, it's rather simple, we just need to lift up the retention arm, which was pretty hard so I had to use a screwdriver. Then we can take out the DX266 CPU, as shown here. And yeah, it's really simple here. As we can see, it's socket 3, so pretty much any CPU is really easy to install since it's a ZIF socket. So if we just lift up the retention arm here, grab our DX4100 chip, and we just simply insert it into the motherboard like so. Yeah, this is probably the easiest 486 upgrade ever. And there we go, our upgrade is complete. Isn't this just a lovely sight to see? A nice DX4100 chip installed into a cool looking motherboard. I really like setups like this. Let's put the lid on the system now and try out some benchmarks with our newly installed DX4100. 
powering the system on, as we can see, it actually does recognize the chip as 100 MHz, though it still says DX2. Running the SpeedSys benchmark again, as we can see, we actually end up getting a score of 29.42 this time around, so there's definitely been a performance increase. And SpeedSys does recognize the processor correctly as a DX4100. Trying out some 3D bench next, as we see, the test seems to be doing pretty well, and we end up getting a score of 38.4. And trying out 3D Bench 2, as we can see, the score ends up being 373. I've gone ahead and compiled all of the data into a nice chart here, so we can clearly see how much of a performance increase we get from this CPU upgrade. The green bars are the DX4100, and the blue bars are the DX266. As you can see, the performance difference is somewhat marginal, however in 3D Bench 2 there is a bit more of a noticeable one. I think our limiting factor here is actually the motherboard's 420TX chipset. It's not really regarded as being that fast compared to SIS or VIA chipsets, so maybe that's what's holding this chip back. But either way, there definitely is a performance difference and the DX4100 is definitely better. So this was a good upgrade overall. Well, that's about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this CPU upgrade and I'll see you next time.